You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, Red Coat number two, written uh, by Jeff Johns, art by Brian Hitch. You have Andrew Curry and Brian Hitch on inks, colors by Brad Anderson and Rob Lay on letters. And we jump into this here where we had that battle. It was already going on. You had Simon and Albert fighting off these hooded guys. Not a great look when you're running around, you know, <laughs> especially that time and whatnot or any time with the hood like that. But they're attacking and you end up having a pretty cool narration with Simon trying to catch us up and, and explain to us. You know, kind of the way that all of this kind of plays out The way that he ends up, you know, going through And he says, I'm not a real great shot You would think he'd be better at things Because he's immortal and he can have time to do it But you kind of get the idea that he's really never settled down on that much And we're going to meet another guy He does mention there is one other immortal We're going to meet him in this issue That guy plays it right And it's funny (laughs) who it is But while they're fighting you end up, and even that, you, you have another play that we had last issue where he says, you know, I'm kind of a guy, I have to go around, I'm assessed, I'm going with guns, and they show him missing completely everybody. He shoots through the age, <laughs> shoots the one guy's <laughs> my hat. hat off. Yeah, the guy's like, my hat, my look hat. Uh, pretty cool, though. And even the way he's holding that gun is so bad. It's, it's yeah. so bad. <laughs> he sucks at everything. Oh, he's terrible. And so he's shooting but it, it does play in a way where if jeff johns wants simon to be this i mean he's like a he's a rascal he is he's a scoundrel i don't think he wants him murdering a ton of people so it makes sense to make him a really bad shot and things and again you could even play the idea he never really learned to shoot because he doesn't want to kill people he's not a bad guy he's just kind of, he's a bit of a scumbag is what he is he's an immortal scumbag but you know he's okay I like him. I think that he's kind of funny, kind of plays off. People said in the first issue, like John Constantine, kind of kind of seems that a bit. But while they're fighting, some guy just comes up to him with a marked hatchet and just boom, right in the stomach, ends up getting him. And you end up even having a flashback to when he got the power, things like this. But this isn't good. The idea that he gets hit, it does, but he doesn't really think anything of it. He's been injured. He's died. He, he has all that stuff going on. But this is a little bit different. And so at one point, there is a funny play. And if it was cinematic, it's really good where, you know, Simon's trying to get his wits together. There are more of these guys coming, but they end up he really cracks the one guy's head off of a, a tombstone. I mean, he really cracks that guy. And you even at that point, you even have. Have Albert like he's loving it. Yep. He's like, yeah, dumb cough, ha ha, and he's got a shovel. He's hitting people, and then he sees these other guys coming. It's like, oh my god, we oh, oh. Simon's <laughs> already <laughs> leaping. He's leaping the, the fence there. This huge, you know, iron fence. That was a pretty good moment. Like yeah. the idea that he he's not even looking back. He's leaving Albert to, to fight for himself, and he just is running. He's already over the deal, and that's where Albert's like, Mister Pure, and starts running after him. And so now in that, you do see that that wound is glowing. But uh, in the meantime, we don't really know, you know, the hatchet, all that. We don't really know the lay of the land and things like that. But you end up having Albert say, hey, I, you know, I, I came here. There's a reason why I came here. How did you get here? He's like, I really don't care about that. Like Simon doesn't care about much. Even even goes, all right, see you later, Alvin. He goes, it's (laughs) Albert, Albert Einstein. And he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I came here because I need you to stop this hellfire. We need to stop this thing. But that's not what Simon is into. He's really the big thing. He's upset that his coat got damaged. and He's got to go and stitch that together again. So you end up where finally Albert is able to, you know, kind of tell a story. But in the meantime, you do have this wound really affecting Simon. But, uh, you know, uh, I'll let you go from there. Because they end up on a train. I mean, things go quick. This is a very quick issue, as the first one was. It's just when Albert starts talking, it really does pull it back slows the, down. the pacing. It really does. And even in, in a thing where you have a page where you're seeing the, you know, the train at the end, there are a lot. It's a lot of narration boxes, which usually does get me, but it's very quick. And I think that what you end up having, because it looks more than. You don't have one huge narration box. For some reason, I think that breaks it up a bit, the way that you go through it. But it's really about Albert and his sister Maya, how they ended up, you know, 
coming to this bit about science versus magic and this whole idea of the immortal and his sister's been having dreams, right? Yeah, so while they're on the train, uh, Albert starts talking to him about it. like, oh, you know, I have this sister and she seems to be a prophet. You know, she has visions of the future. And, uh, you know, at first me and my family just thought it was like crazy dreams or whatever. But then some of her predictions started coming true. And one of them is talking about how America will eventually have coast to coast fire. It will just be completely aflame because of a spell that happens. And the only person who can stop it is you, Mr. Pure. And Simon, Simon's just like, what? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, what? And it's funny because I just wanted to make sure. And I looked up because I was like, maybe Einstein's sister. She, he did have the sister by that name. And I thought maybe she was like in a call. She actually was a doctor. And, oh, okay. uh, you know, very smart herself. And it's kind of a cool play that you change up. Again, I like the little changes and what they might mean and how, how you go with it. Uh, but again, yeah, he's like, yeah, I think your sister just had some dreams. Like, you this, that, the deal. And even then, Albert's like, man, this, you know, don't you want to save the world in this country? It's so great. It's a wonder world. And you end up where he's like, yeah, it's okay. And then he's like, well, well, why don't you live in England? And he's like, yeah, I had some bad times there. <laughs> and like, this is this thing where he's always on the run and says that the work that he does, there's more in the U.S. Now, he's already told us he's kind of a mercenary type deal. Albert says and It's funny because he says I should be a tailor. It's one thing that he, he actually got better at. But he said there's no money in it. And Albert says, well, what is your job? He goes, yeah, I'm a tailor. And it's kind of funny. I, I just <laughs> like but he says these symbols. You know, it, it's more like there's Simon. He's not dumb. He's just kind of, you know, a scumbag. But he ends up where the, the symbols, Albert says, these are the symbols of my sister's dream. She drew them. So there's that connection, too. And the big thing that they do have the axe. And, uh, yeah, it's like Simon, just nothing seems to impress him in a way of, you know, caring. But again, then it, when he gets hit by this pain, from where the axe hit. I mean, things explode. They're all over. <laughs> you even have like that. I think that what you should do is get that axe away from him because there's even lightning coming back and forth between them. But says it's getting worse. We're gonna we're gonna have to do something now. They're on, uh, you know, on a trip here. They're going to New York City because you have Simon say that I think there's you know this one other guy. Maybe he might know a little about this, or maybe we can figure it out. We're going to see who that is in a minute. But you go from there because they are. It's funny, too, because they walk into like a really fancy ball. Like this is at dinner, a ball going on. I somehow thought there was some magic going because nobody's really reacting that much. And even when they're going in, Simon kind of said, I thought that there was some wacky stuff going on. Not really. No, <laughs> they, don't, they don't care. Yeah, they're just walking in. Albert's hand. It's funny. You get little Albert and you have. Simon, who insists on wearing that jacket still, you know, he has this red coat on. I guess. It's still got the blood in it from earlier. And uh, yeah, he's hurting. They go in. Albert is wearing like an oversized coat, like trying to get the dress code. Kind of funny there. But they go in and he's, they're talking about, oh, we're going to go to this big to do this. This immortal guy, he has used the time to really benefit. He's got money. He's, well, look at this guy. It's all. So here's what happens in this. When things start going like this, I've, I'm already getting to the point where I'm trying to figure out who it is, where you go by the timing and you're like, okay, New York City, where you go? And it makes full sense who is connected. Not that we're going to know who the immortal is, but the next name they'll jump up because as they go in, I mean, they stick out too. Nobody's really paying attention, but I'll give it to you because he ends up after talking kind of some crap about not really liking this other immortal they seem to be rivals, but it really seems from the other guy's side more. But you tell yeah. him who it is, because it is pretty cool. Yeah, it is Benedict Arnold. He is the other immortal. And Benedict Arnold, he has this obsession with uh, Simon, where it's like, oh, you know, uh, I'm like the good version of him. You know, like, you know, me and him, we we're both immortal. But, you know, I'm, I'm rich and wealthy. And, you know, I succeed in everything I do. And look at him. He's just this... Uh, Poor bum he's of a, a scoundrel, about, right? He's a yeah. bum. He, that's what he is. I hate to say scumbag, so I'll say bum, but that's what he is. Yeah. He is a bum. And I love the idea where it, it's such a diss when when Benedict Arnold, then he changes his name throughout, and you kind of get that he's kind of, you know, a lady killer as well, yeah. where he is going to. He's a black widow, if you yeah, will. Yeah, he ends up. I don't know that he actually kills them because he can eh. just outlive them. It doesn't really matter to him. It's a long game. 
Uh, but he's a gold he digger. changes his name and then he's a gold digger and he ends up he's going to continue doing that uh, in this. And he's a good looking guy. He's doing yeah. that. And also very, probably very slow. Everything that you get from being an immortal, including investments and getting things and, you know, doing the long haul with that. Now, in the meantime, we know Simon, he's not going to do anything like that. But it's so funny. The diss is when Benedict comes up and says, hey, and I like where Simon calls him Benny, which is probably a, a diss anyway. But then Benedict Donald's like, oh, are you coming to get some money again? You need some help again? He keeps saying again. <laughs> and and Simon isn't saying, like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's obviously happening. I think that there is a cool play and might eventually, you know, tie together. We don't know if Benedict Arnold, how he got. He says he ended up getting the immortality a little after me. I'm not sure of the thing. It seems this would have been the more, I guess, the more legit way. But well, it's not like he's after. You know, Simon, he's not part of that cold, it seems. So I don't know how he got I, it I, and what's I, the deal. I, I have kind of a theory. I mean, because we know Benjamin Franklin was supposed to get the immortality. And so Simon, I'm wondering if this is like a founding father situation where like maybe each of them were going to be immortal. Yeah. And maybe Benedict Arnold somehow got roped into it. So. But the weird play, it, either it's, you know, because it has to be legit because he's in the open and nobody's coming after him. Right. They are going after Simon because he wasn't supposed to do this. But it, it seems like Benedict, again, does he have just – is it fun for him that there's somebody else who's immortal that goes through the same thing? Because I do think that in that he might actually not mind Simon because there's only one other person who has gone through what he has with this. And Simon is a bum. So it's kind of funny, I think, <laughs> to throw shade. But by the end, he's not so – not he's not upset that it looks like Simon could die, but you end up where he comes in. Oh, you want some money again, whatnot. But it's more of Simon's like, I got to figure out what's going on. I have some problems. They're just grabbing food. And I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's some there's beef Wellington. I see there's a lot of good things. And oh, yeah. Simon had mentioned or like he has to keep eating. So and yeah. Benedict knows that. So they're playing. But then a woman comes over and goes, oh, what is this? One of your associates. And. It's a lady named Juliet, and he, she, he says it's a childhood friend, kind of a funny way to say in the way of immortals the deal. But he, like, he doesn't look good. Like, he, he has to stink, even. I yeah. mean, the way he is, and nobody's like, says, <laughs> why are you wearing that coat and things? But she seems to like him a bit, which pisses <laughs> off Benedict. Now, I like where Halbert kisses her hands. Oh, a boy. And he's up late. It's really funny, but we find out. The next bit of the deal is her name's Juliet Morgan, and you go with who her father is. Yeah, J.P. Morgan. Yeah, it's J.P. Morgan. So he, you know, Benedict, and even says at points the way he's saying it, like, I got to do this. I got to get, he's just in it for the money. So yeah. he is, oh, that's yeah. how he gets it. But she's pretty. Yeah, uh, she is. Yeah. So in that, they're like, I can't, they're like, we can't wait. We can't wait. Here we, and they end up going and <laughs> then they, they lock him in, in the study, this huge room. I mean, it's humongous. And they have to wait it out. And I like where Simon's just like, hey, uh, Albert, you done with that prime rib? Uh, I'm going to eat it if you're not. And Albert's kind of upset. He's like, oh, you got us in here, whatnot. Because at a point, you even have the classic, you know, roguish thing where Simon's like grabbing drinks off other people's tables. <laughs> and like, hey, you know, I have, to, I have a woman to entertain here. And yeah, and he says, and besides, neither one of you are invited, which is cool. And they shove them in to this, this room. So they have to, they have to wait. So in that, though, you have them, you know, talking, waiting, and suddenly you end up when Albert does come in, or Albert, when uh, Benedict Arnold comes in, he like shoves open the door and it knocks Albert over. And it's like, are you going to say sorry to the kid? And he's like, no, he just steps over. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I a step over. And you end up where at that point, then Simon's hit hard with this oh, yeah. energy and he ends up seeing a bunch of things he even says oh my god i saw you know this and i saw i saw uh but he can't really talk at the bit and that's where you have benedict arnold benny he realizes what's going on he sees the axe and he's like oh my god because they you end up where uh what's his I'm kidding, albert albert einstein says it's from that axe it's the axe that's in he's like what what you know he's cursed and he looks oh the axe of lies oh yeah and then he says his blood was spilled and starts laughing. And I'm like, oh, God. And he says, oh, that's great. You know, I don't mean to laugh, but you will die in three days. You ain't coming back. This is it. That's the way to stop the immortality. 
And Simon kind of looks like he's going to cry, actually. And then I like that it says next month, Simon says a lot of things that will be censored, no doubt. Uh, but I thought it was a good issue. Yeah. I don't think it was a great issue. I like Geiger last week better. And I think while this might be, I don't know, I, it might be a better issue than the first issue. It kind of together goes with this idea that this is going to be a bit of a slow burn. You're going to end up finding out stuff about the world and about how, you know, magic is involved, but also see what's happening with Simon Benedict Arnold. I did like it, but it's still, yeah. it's not, I can't, I just, I said, I think I like Gogger more. And I'm thinking that when Rook comes out, this might be firmly at number three, but number three is still pretty good. Uh, yeah. What would you give it? Yeah, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. I still really enjoy it. I'm an eight. Game. Yeah, the art is really good, and I do really like the historical characters yeah, coming into fun. play. It's all really cool, but you're right. It is very much a slow burn, and if you're not willing to stick with it, it's going to be very hard. But I, I still like it. Like I said, it's like a Forrest Gump meets Highlander type of thing. You have an immortal <laughs> going around meeting everybody, so it's kind of cool. Weird science is the revolution.